thicknesses of our sub-base layer, the type of material I'm going to use in my base or sub-base layer. All of these, what seem like mundane decisions that turn out to have a substantial effect on cost and on performance, with these kinds of multi-scale approaches, by looking at the material and the pavement and their interaction together, you could actually assess which of these was more likely to perform better or worse. And then you can actually use this, although it's not being used, it could be used in a total life cycle cost to tell us, okay, I may be having, I may have substantially less damage initially with this thicker material. What's missing today is how much better. We can't quantify and say it's going to be 50% better, 20% better. And that level of, relative level of improvement is important for life cycle analysis and predicting how, how well the material will, um, how much more efficient it will be over time. So that's what these tools are meant for. So just to kind of wrap up and put everything back together, uh, when we talk about multi-scale approaches, what we're really talking about is spanning different scales. And each scale, we have individual questions to answer. So for example, in the molecular range, the question becomes, and I'm sure you probably can't read that in the back, is how do molecular components form and interact to yield the behaviors of my asphalt binder? And that's not just important in the molecular range, but the behavior of the binder is important in our materials as well. Because that's going to dictate how the mastic behaves and how the mixture ultimately behaves. And then the behavior of the mixture dictates how well the performance, the pavement performs. And this is not a simple linear scale. It's actually a pulling scale. The pavement design is pulling us to improve our materials. But we're also pulling from the molecular range to try to gain kind of insight into the material, learn why the behaviors we get are, are seen. That's the, the end of the, the seminar. So I, I appreciate your attention. But we'll just open it to questions, sort of. Uh, Sam. So what's the what, what? So looking from the winter to summer, you're obviously not expecting any permanent damage per se in the winter time compared to the summer. All the damage comes in the summer. That's not true. Okay. So what you saw here, fatigue is, is fatigue is neat. Okay. Fatigue is neat because we have two different contributing factors. We have what you see here, which is step one. How much strain is in the system? But for fatigue, it's not just about the resistance to deformation. That's what this is. How easy will the material deform? It's also about how easy will the material resist damage growth. That's a separate constitutive equation. Okay, that's the, the C versus S kind of equation. And that gets driven differently depending on the modulus of the material. The modulus of the material is stiffer here. So actually, in, in actuality, what you see in fatigue generally is more damage at the, uh, not the lowest temperature, as an intermediate temperature. You don't see the most damage at negative 10 degrees. You don't see the most damage at 54. It's more like 20 degrees, 19 degrees. So it goes back to what we talked about in your office today. That's right. So it goes back to the interaction that you have. And what becomes even more neat about fatigue, again, as I think of it, when you're looking at high temperature, you also start to integrate other mechanisms that, that I didn't talk about here. Asphalt concrete, or asphalt cement in particular, heals. If you take asphalt cement, you take two pieces, and you put them together, the material will actually rebond, and if you give it enough time, and enough time is up for debate, but let's just say enough time, that material will behave homogeneously like nothing ever happened. Pretty neat. Okay. Other questions? Um, you're talking about the um, the pavement analysis engine, mm -hmm. and that's so coming from the, the system side transportation. That clicked for me. Um, <laughs> but so, have you been involved in designing these, this engine and this kind of more predictive model? Yeah. So the short answer is sort of. Okay. So in terms of the actual program, the actual building of the finite element model, no. But it, it's, it's actually an interesting uh, relationship because people who generally have a good expertise in how to do this well don't know heads from tails from pavements. So there's quite a bit of give and take in terms of 
what are the typical parameters when you build this kind of computational tool. So finite element, as you know, is just a general tool that's been used in structures and water. It's used everywhere. So to tailor it specifically to the problem of a pavement that's undergoing micro damage along with healing, along with other behaviors, uh, it is a given. Do you think there's a way to make it heal faster? Oh, that's actually a good question. So the, the short answer is probably, but we don't know because we don't fully understand yet all of the parameters that dictate the healing. Now the idea is, so what, what happens now is I told you that there are two, two camps, two groups. Two groups. One works here. One works here. So we have a lot of people who are working in the binder healing area. Just because something shows a better tendency to heal in binder does not mean that it translates into mix. Because one of the parameters that dictates healing is how intimate, how much force you apply to push these two together, which is a mechanical property. Mechanical properties will be dictated by parameters within the mix that are difficult to actually predict and interact. We also have with healing, we have the, the basic properties of the binder. Now you can, you can look at binder properties here, but a 50% change in binder properties doesn't translate to a 50% change in mix. So it's a very, the short answer is it's complicated. But because we don't understand the link fully between these two phases, it's hard to say how much healing. Any other questions? I expected some from the pavement analysis guys, and this is on the exam one. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we and Melissa are talking yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh, that's going to be on the test tomorrow, God. <laughs> okay, I would like to thank Dr. Shane once again for sharing his valuable research.